Hello everyone, I am Darshani, Assistant Professor of Mathematics. In the previous sessions, you have learnt kernel of a homomorphism, range of a homomorphism and some of the properties of kernel and range of a homomorphism. In this session, you are going to learn about fundamental theorem of group homomorphism. Uh, this theorem actually relates the structures of two objects between which a homomorphism is defined. We get a nice relation connecting the domain group, kernel of the homomorphism and range of the homomorphism. Fundamental theorem of homomorphism or first isomorphism theorem. First, let me define the theorem. Let F be a homomorphism from a group G onto a group K dash. If the kernel of F is equal to K, then the quotient group G by K is isomorphic to K dash. In other words, every homomorphic image of a group G is isomorphic to a quotient group of G. Before proving this theorem, let us know what is an isomorphism. Isomorphism is a mapping f from g to g dash satisfying three conditions. The first condition is f should be a homomorphism. Next, the mapping f should be 1 1. And finally, f should be 1 2. Whenever there is an isomorphism from a group G onto the group J dash, we say that the group G and J dash are isomorphic and it is denoted by this symbol. Now let us prove the theorem. To define the quotient group G by K, first K should be a normal subgroup of G. But we know that kernel of a homomorphism is always a normal subgroup of the domain. Hence, K is a normal subgroup of. To show that G by K is isomorphic to G dash, we have to define a function which is 1, 1, on 2 and is a homomorphism. So, we define a rule phi which maps the elements of G by K into the elements of G dash defined by phi of xk is equal to f of x for all x belongs to g. We know that the elements of g by k are of the form xk where x is an element of g. Since f from g to g dash is an onto function, the elements of g dash are of the form f of x where x belongs to So this rule maps the elements of G by K into the elements of K dash. Here we have a confusion. In case of cosets, it may happen x not equal to y, but xk can be equal to yk. Phi will be a function if and only if every element of G by K have a unique image in G dash. That is, if uh, xk is equal to yk, then xk should have a same image as that of yk. But here, phi of xk maps to f of x, phi of yk maps to f of y. We don't know whether f of x is equal to f of y or not. First, we shall check whether this rule is a function or not. For that, we take xy belongs to g such that xy equal to yk. xk is equal to yk if and only if y inverse xk is equal to k. And this happens only when y inverse x is an element of k. But k is the kernel of f, therefore we have f of y inverse x is equal to e dash where e dash is the identity element of k dash. Now 
since f is a homomorphism f of y inverse x can be written as f of y inverse into f of x but by a property of homomorphism f of y inverse can also be written as f of y whole inverse so we have f of y whole inverse into f of x is equal to a dash now i operate f of y on both the sides i get f of y into f of y whole inverse into f of x is equal to f of y into a dash f of y is an element of j dash and f of y whole inverse is the inverse of f of y by the inverse law of j dash this product is equal to a dash so i have a dash into f of x is equal to f of y into a dash now by the identity law of j dash we have f of x equal to f of y or phi of x k equal to phi of y k we started at x k equal to y k we have shown that x k equal to y k if and only if phi of x k equal to phi of y k this means that x k equal to y k implies phi of x k equal to phi of y k and phi of x k equal to phi of y k implies x k equal to y k on the one hand the rule we defined is a well defined function on the other hand phi is a one one function so we have two conclusions the correspondence phi is a well defined function and phi is one one let me take this statement as one next to prove that phi is on two let me take an element y in j dash given that f from g to j dash is on two so there exists an element x in g which maps to y we know that f of x is phi of x k so phi of x k equal to y in other words x k is the pre image of y under the mapping phi and hence phi is an onto function from g by k to j dash let me take this statement as 2 and finally we shall show that phi is an homomorphism consider phi of x k into y k which is equal to phi of x y k we know that uh, x k into y k is equal to x y k by the definition of phi phi of x y k is equal to f of x y since f is a homomorphism f of x y can be written as f of x into f of y again by the definition of phi f of x is phi of x k and f of y is phi of y k so we have shown that phi is a homomorphism from j by k on to j dash let me take this statement as 3 from 1 2 and 3 we conclude that phi is an isomorphism from j by k on to j dash that is j by k is isomorphic to j dash this completes the proof of fundamental theorem of homomorphism the above theorem can also be stated as if f from g to j dash is a homomorphism then g by kernel of f is isomorphic to f of g this follows from the fact that the function f from g to f of g is a non two function now let us see an example show that z by the group generated by n is isomorphic to certain first i define a function f from z plus to certain addition modulo n defined by f of m equal to m modulo n 
we can easily show that f is a homomorphism from z plus to onto z n addition modulo n and now i consider f of m equal to 0 f of m equal to 0 if and only if m modulo n equal to 0 m modulo n is equal to 0 if and only if m is a multiple of n that is m is equal to nk where k is n integer so the kernel of f is nz or the subgroup generated by n hence by the fundamental theorem of homomorphism z by subgroup generated by n is isomorphic to that n. 